done a lot of work on Cincinnati area fossils, um, quite a variety of, uh, of uh, those over the years with uh, various different people, either from John Coke and uh, John Pagetta and Russo Flowers. And tonight he's going to speak to us on uh, Cincinnati nauloids, cephalopods. Uh, Mr. Bob Fry. Coupled with stability and mobility <coughs> up off of the water column. 
And this was facilitated by the evolution of a variety of gas and ballast-filled chambered shells, we call the fragmatone, the development of a, of a very comparatively sophisticated, well-developed central nervous system, an enhanced respiratory system with enlarged gills, and a novel method of mobility, uh, jet propulsion. Rex Crick in the, in the 80s looked at nautiloid <coughs> form and function and documented the various types of shell morphologies utilized by nautiloids, all of which are found in the Ordition. You have uh, small to large necto, nectonic and nectobenthic uh, <coughs> longicones, which are on the bottom of the slide here represented by the endoceroids, the actinoceroids, and the orthoceroids, where you have calcareous ballast that is concentrated apically and ventrally, facilitating a horizontal attitude in the water column. These nautiloids, these long longicones, which are the most abundant nautiloids in the Cincinnatian, uh, have all the mass in the body chamber at the adoral end. So they would, in the water column, these things would be standing on their heads. To facilitate a more um, functional life orientation, they developed this apical ballast, which brought the center of mass and the center of buoyancy towards the middle of the shell, allowing these things to obtain this horizontal uh, orientation. You also have a variety of endogastric and exogastric uh, longiconic and certiconic uh, bredicones. These are the forms in the middle there. And these forms had reduced fragmatones so that the chambered part of the shell was was relatively small compared to the larger body chamber. And they were probably nectobenthic <coughs> saltators that spent a lot of time crawling on the bottom, but periodically could, could shoot their jets and zip up off of the, the bottom and motor around. These forms are believed to be the ancestral stock for modern day living models. Not what you might think. You might think, well, the Nautilus is coiled, so you'd think these evolutely coiled forms, which are upper in your upper uh, left corner there, would be the ancestral stock for Nautiloids, but these things are, are pretty much unique to the Paleozoic. These are nectobenthic coiled forms, and again, the exogaster coiling brings the center of buoyancy over the center of mass, which is the body chamber, allowing these things to be stable and live off the bottom. These include various types of ordivision forms, the tarfiserids, the verandioceridids, trochilidids, and the espidoceratids. And then finally we have a bizarre group of of poorly known nautiloids that are called the ascocerids. These things started out life uh, with a longiconic shell, kind of like this one over here. And as the shell, uh, as the animal grew, the body chamber became modified and the, the longiconic fragment cone was truncated, was cut off. And this then led to a, a, a very streamlined body shape where you had, the, the, again, the development of dorsal uh, camera sitting on top of uh, the body chamber of the shell, which was ventral and laterally. Yeah, somebody have a... I don't know, Dick, you, uh, Richard, you did a good job up there. <laughs> yeah. 
So basically, it started out life as this thing, and then it modified, as it, it obtained the maturity, it modified this part of the shell so that these camerae migrated dorsally, and the body chamber was ventral, and then it just has a, a septum of truncation here, and this whole part of the shell here was dropped off. This, again, makes for a very streamlined uh, shell, and I, I think these things are probably nectonic swimmers. 